Okay. Right, here we are at uh, the uh, Cromwell College, uh, part of the grounds that's now being excavated um, by the Oxford um, Archaeology Society. Have I got that right? Oxford Archaeology <laughs> East. Uh, right, thank you. And this is Stephen and th this is Rob who are um, taking down all the uh, details and uh, in very much into what's going on around here. Um, can you tell me first of all, um, how did you actually come to get into excavating the site? What right. actually drove you into doing this? Well, the reason we're here is that, is that the, the, the school's doing a whole series of redevelopment work, uh, new sports pitches, I think Sports England Glatz are involved. And so ahead of all this work, uh, it's, it's really important in areas like Chatteris, where there's, where there's a long history of, the, of, 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 of human occupation and archaeology, that we come and have a check to see if anything's here that might be affected by all the various building and development work. So we came out here last year and did what's called an evaluation, put a series of small trenches across various parts of the site that were going to be affected. And as a result of that, we found in certain areas a few sort of clues that there was something um, quite important under the ground here. And particularly in this area, we found the remains of, of pits and post holes uh, that looked like they, they were of a Bronze Age or Iron Age date which was very old and also suggested something which was very rare in this area, which was which actually building a settlement of that time. Fine. Um, also, is that when you, when you uh, actually started on, on this, um, did you have any... Uh, it, but you, you've already excavated certain areas around Chatteris, so you knew there would be areas of uh, important interest to, to, to people. Well, absolutely. But, but was there any sort of overall plan? Did you actually take uh, any aerial pictures of the site to actually pinpoint where you should finally dig? Well, not, 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 not ourselves, but I think, Rob, you were involved in the excavations all on, on the Tide Barn farm site behind us. And I think there you looked at air photographs taken from previous, previous records? Both air photos and geophysics. Uh, the whole idea was to get as many different sources and try and identify any possible uh, influence in where settlement was. Right. And what we found was that most of the ridge and furrow, medieval ploughing, had masked things. But we had a few glimpses of where archaeology was, especially about uh, half a kilometre away, where we had some nicer evidence of a river, paleo channel, and we think there's settlements on either side in the Bronze Age. And so what we're trying to understand by looking over a massive, uh, about 70, 80 uh, hectares, I mean, uh, you're trying to find out what archaeology is in the landscape, where settlements were over different periods of time, had they moved, had they stayed, how long did they ex uh, exist, how big were they were, and trying to understand what was going on. This is a very rare example of actually looking at a landscape in an urban complex around Chatteris itself. Fine. Just going back to the aerial photographs, what, um, what do you actually look for? I mean, you go up in an aircraft and you take a picture. Do you see any land undulations that, that would pinpoint this? Well, uh, the sort of thing you're looking for, I mean, I mean Cambridgeshire and East Anglia is actually really, is, is sort, of, sort of blessed from the sort of Second World War onwards with these with a history of airfields and aeroplanes flying over yep. it. And so it, it's got a fantastic record that goes back, you know, 50, 60 years um, in, you know, in an unbroken sort of way of charting it. You look around the sort of the site here today, you see behind us, Tan here is digging, hopefully you can see that sort of darker soil sitting above the sort of lighter yellowy natural. Now what, 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 how that shows up if you've got large features of that in the air in the photograph is as dark marks in the soil or there's more moisture in these holes in the ground and that basically means that the crops above them grow at slightly different rates. So if you're lucky on aerial photographs in certain times when it's very dry and very sunny, parch marks or crop marks as they're known will show up on these aerial photographs which sort of show the, ra the, the old roots of roads or ditches Unlikely to find an individual pit that you might, or maybe Bronze Age barrows, so the larger features may show up. And the Fenland is great for that. And also, as you look around you here, you've got the houses that, uh, on the edge of Chatteris. Chatteris is an island, and, and we, all, we understand those in terms of the Fens. Yeah, obviously we're a long way from the sea, but in the, in the Roman period, in the Iron Age and the Bronze Age, this is surrounded by water and sea, effectively, in certain parts of time. And so this is the dry ground, which has got and it's sort of less of soil above the gravels and so things like air photographs can show us lots of information but as Rob has said here the the ridge and furrow which is the cultivation in the last few hundred years yeah. has masked some of that so ultimately for us to fully understand what goes on here we can't do it by air photographs we have to actually get our hands dirty and, and come and dig we, right. we, we, we certainly didn't know about this site and this is one of the importance about this evaluation was that we actually found this during work 
without the development, we wouldn't know about it. Yeah. Right, so, so the sequence of events is that um, <coughs> planning permission goes in to develop a site. Um, you, you flag up an interest to say, well, there may be items of interest, uh, important interest around this site because of the finds already found. Exactly, the history Chatteris. of the sites, yes, so exactly. You, you come along and, as, you, as I can see, you've excavated the whole site. Now, um, can you then tell me, after you've excavated this area, I mean, it's about, what, a metre meter off the um, top surface, you're then yeah. left, left with the, as it is, the surface as it is now. What do you actually look for now to see, to carry on where you're going to dig? Right, well, I mean, what, what, what you can see here, the um, plan behind this, what, basically what we're looking for, once we've sort of stripped off what we would call the topsoil and the subsoil, okay. um, which again, you can sort of see there where the, where the, where the, uh, the shovel is, what we're looking for is what we call cut features. So basically, the, 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 where, where a ditch has gone through or a pit has been dug through. And what happens is, is that what falls into those features is, is rubbish, dirt, material, um, and often that's uh, maybe burnt material, charcoal, and it, it, it'll be of a different colour. So what the archaeologists are looking for is, is the difference in the soil colours, both in field but also in site. In, site in, we, wouldn't say, we wouldn't eat it, but you, you could sort of tell that side of it. And so basically you're looking for dark patches that right. fill the ditches and the pits and then, and then you dig those out and what's in those is the archaeology and, and is the rubbish and remains that's been fallen in for this site about, what was it, Rob, about just over 2,000 years ago, about Middle Iron Age? Yes, about, uh, we're talking about 4th, 3rd century BC and uh, the pottery from the uh, hollows, from the evaluation, is about that date. And, uh, and what we think in that period is that you've probably got a couple of million people living around the country and it grows and grows in the late Iron Age and the Roman period where population largely uh, goes to about six, seven million. So what in the Iron Age in particular, when they, they're, they're actually expanding uh, and settlements like these become increasingly common in the late Iron Age period and in the Roman period. This is slightly rarer being middle Iron Age and uh, we haven't got that many examples in the local area. So what we're now finding in this excavation is a new farm set which we didn't know about. We've got evidence for houses, uh, we've got evidence of four post structures, four posts, probably four granary, raising above the ground posts, and we've got areas of pitting. So we've actually, we've planned the whole area and so we now know where the houses are, where the granaries are and where the pitting is and we can date each one. And we're hopefully going to have a sequence of events over probably maybe a hundred years where the, we can actually tell where different parts of a settlement uh, uh, were, were developed. Right. The items of interest that you found, you then are going to take them away to analyse them further um, and then collate it all into an overall... Uh, all the pottery situation. goes to a pottery specialist. Yep. Or the, uh, we've uh, got someone who's uh, spent all her life looking at prehistoric pottery. <laughs> and so uh, she's, she's done it for about 25 years and she's an expert on this area and into Norfolk and uh, Suffolk. The animal bone like, like the, uh, goes to an animal bone specialist in house where we will get a report on all these different factors, all the different photographs, and we write it a big report. The aim is to get this actually uh, as a grey literature report which is accessible for everyone in the county and beyond. And this may even merit a small publication in the journal because it's actually of interest, which is, will actually uh, inform people what is happening in the area. and we. With the work behind us at the, on the Tide Farm farm area, we can actually understand what happened, uh, what the whole area over about three, four thousand years. Right, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Sim. Just one final question: How long have you actually got to do this work? We got to the end of next week, and so a week today we have, we have to be finished. Not long. Not so long. you've got to get going. <laughs> thank you very much. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you.